Hello my dear Cancer, this is your love and spirituality reading for the month of June 2018 with me Queen of Cups Tarot. I read for the signs in order of most liked videos so don't forget to hit the thumbs up button for your sign but I don't think I need to worry so much with, with you Cancer because uh, the previous reading that I did, not the one that I did for mid-June but the, the one I did for uh, for June, uh, the first video I did for June, um, was I have gotten thousand likes, over thousand likes from you, Cancer, for for that video, and I'm super super grateful for all the love and appreciation. So it was a record for me to get that many likes. So I really appreciated it. Thank you. So uh, I want to explain that the reading can go both ways. So if I tell you that you are feeling or acting in a certain way and you don't recognize yourself, it can be in the reversed, that the person you are dealing with is feeling and acting in this way. The energy is the same, it's just different castings to the different roles by the universe. So for this reading, I will use the Druid Craft Tarot by Philip and Stephanie Cargome, illustrated by Will Worthington, and I will start shuffling your cards. So, uh, my dear Cancer, when I open your deck here, I see Four of Cups and Ace of Wands. So it seems like you're waiting for something happy to happen and you might be a little bit low on your energy. Uh, maybe you need to restore your energy and it seems like this will actually happen. Uh, Four of Cups is not a high energy card. It's, a, it's like a person refusing happiness or refusing happy things in their lives. Maybe because their hopes is down or they think it's going to be the same old, same old. Or maybe they are very low on energy and they can't really... Um, can't really get out of that state but with Ace of Wands there comes there will come new energy to your life that will make you uh, sparkle and shine once more and it can also be that you are this uh, uh, this deer here kind of hesitating before the jump maybe uh, you think that uh, it will be dangerous or maybe you think that you have too much hopes maybe you don't want to make the the jump here the <laughs> okay and um uh, so it can be different things. Um, it's actually why I laughed. It's hope. In Swedish, hop. Uh, this jump is hop. <laughs> so it's kind of the same word, hope and hop. Uh, it's kind of spells almost uh, the same. Uh, so that's why I, I laughed because of the uh, synchronicity. So I'm thinking that you are a little bit down on your mood, uh, but there will come uh, things that will uh, sparkle your enthusiasm once more. Okay, so uh, I call uh, the divine with love and light. It's not easy to shuffle these cards. Uh, and here we have the lady with the ace of wands. So, okay, it might be that there's some kind of pregnancy going on. It doesn't have to be a, like an actual baby pregnancy. It can be that you are pregnant with something new. And uh, with the four of cups, it might be that you need to develop this new in, in kind of stillness. It's something that's going to come from deep within you and, and be all brand new. Uh, so the lady is the card of creativity, uh, creation. It can be you starting your own business or uh, s starting something new and prosperous, maybe starting to uh, create something, paint, write. It can also be taking care of your garden, uh, doing something for your economy because the lady, nature, is the basic of all uh, economy. Uh, if we don't have nature, we don't have uh, an economy. Okay, so this is the basics for all uh, companies and and things that you want to create. Where you kind of take, you buy a sheep and you get lamb from them, and and you sell off the lamb and then you make a profit. So it comes from nature. All this, uh, also with money. But uh, this is also a card for love. It's connected to Venus. Uh, and we can see the red here on the cloak. It's almost like a birth is, is happening. Uh, so uh, something new being born when it comes to love. And, and this Ace of Wands is uh, it's like a new path or a new ignition. Or uh, it's, it's also like growth. Uh, in many uh, decks, this, we can see the new growth on the staff here. And here it's like springtime in this card. So, uh, I called for Archangels in the Four Corners of the World. 
And here we see the Princess of Pentacles together with the Ace of Wands. So again, with this newness, she's holding the seed of tomorrow. Uh, so it seems like the natural you, very close to nature. We have seen both the Empress and this Page of Pentacles will uh, rejuvenate you and make you ready for the new start. It might be that you need to be very close to nature. Uh, maybe you need, um, with the Four of Cups, you might need a vacation, uh, spending it a lot in nature to reunify, uh, re no, re <laughs> re <laughs> okay, restart yourself, okay, I'm using simpler words. Sometimes my tongue gets wrecked. Okay, uh, so I call the six elements, earth, wind, fire, water, spirit, and ether to join us here today and to give us a clear view reading for my dear Cancer viewers. So I want my dear Cancers to have love in their lives. Prince of Wands, maybe. That's Sagittarius energy. And what I'm holding here is the High Priestess. So if it comes in like a hasty... Um, energy into your life you might uh, be having a rather stoic um, approach to this um, this what comes in here because the high priestess is in utterly self-respect and the prince of wands uh, might be a little bit pushy so it might be that someone will uh, try to court you or try to invite you maybe in a new project or persuade you to do something in a new way. Both these cards are very spiritual. The Prince of Wands comes from the East and go to the people in the West with the, uh, the spiritual uh, side of life. And the High Priestess, she is always in contact, contact with spirits. But it's in a little bit different ways. This is more lighthearted and, and fun. And, and this is more like more serious. Uh, and this is m most connected to water. So I'm thinking cancer will be more serious. And someone here wants to have lighthearted fun. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see where, where it goes with that. Okay, so where were I? Uh, yes, I want my dear Cancer to have love in their lives and to find themselves in loving relationships. I also want you to have creative success and to be able to walk on the highest path towards the highest destiny. Oh, it's magic. Okay, so I will do a little bit a shorter spread with nine cards. I'm trying to rejuvenate myself as well uh, during the summer and... Um, so I'm doing a little bit shorter spread right now and we'll see if it if I make a habit out of it or if I go back to the longer spread uh, when maybe when fall comes. We'll see. It, it depends on your reaction as well because I care about uh, what, what you think and what you like. Okay, so I'll just tune in here for a few seconds. Okay, so my dear Cancer, this is your future, there, and this is your now, there, and this is your past. And in the past we have the hangman, so that suits rather well with the Four of Cups card that we saw. There it was a person sitting in the bottom of the roots here with the tree and with the Four of Cups, and it's like a little bit of a blockage. Someone is maybe mourning or digesting something from the past or you renew. Ah. Uh, trying to restore themselves okay <laughs> and here we have the hangman it's kind of the same things but they're not really restoring themselves it's more like being put through a test and being blocked like the path forward is blocked and he was about to do harvest here and then uh, being strung up in this tree it's kind of um, a block in in the way forward to what he wanted to accomplish in his life the 12 the hangman is also connected to uh, 12 1 plus 2 is um, 3 it's the empress card uh, so this can be the pregnancy part of it all like a person being pregnant with the new uh, kind of preparing for the new uh, so eagerly waiting for this new baby to come but need to have patience and stay in the transformative path period like you can't just uh, spit out like a new baby it needs to take a little bit time and it needs to take time to grow and it might feel like you're a little bit impatient hanging like this he makes the four also that's the sign for the emperor uh, so this is maybe how uh, the masculine is dealing with his feminine with uh, being perceptive and and having patient and waiting for nature to have its course it's a little bit more impatient 
so uh, that's the past so some kind of spiritual blockage it's a like a honey trap the divine is luring you into something or want you to long for something but kind of just hangs it before your nose so you will try and try and try and try and in this try and try and try you will find the solution that the divine was searching for all along like they wanted you to learn something more to become more wise uh, and by challenging you this was also what happened and in the now we have the seven of swords so the seven of swords is a person being burdened with worry and sometimes we don't want to feel this worry so we might skip it all along uh, we kind of don't um, we try to not think of our problems and just uh, brush them underneath the carpet but uh, this person uh, is uh, facing them kind of head on but he's not uh, really happy with this normally the seven of swords can be a little bit more uh, a person that's a little bit more casual with their worries they kind of um, lie about what how they feel and show a false facade and um, show a false face and running away with with all the swords and kind of keeping a lot of secrets and uh, doing shady business maybe trickery but in this card it shows more uh, the original meaning of the seven of swords that that's not really a thief or someone having a mask but it's someone having a bad um, a bad self-esteem uh, that they think that either they deserve um, things going wrong or they are wondering why uh, does things go wrong is this what I deserve it can also be a person thinking well I'm not good enough there's no use I have no hope um, I, I will never accomplish this it's too much problems so it's a lot of negative thinking that comes out of a challenging situation so the hangman is challenges and the seven of swords uh, all sevens are challenges uh, so here is a challenge when it comes to your way of thinking so I'm not saying you are supposed to brush all your problems underneath the surface but we can use the serenity prayer for these kind of things that we can only uh, deal with the things that we actually can do something about if we can't do anything about it there's no point in worrying uh, so maybe there comes a solution tomorrow and then you can deal with the problem and sometimes we are worrying of things that will never ever happen uh, so we can worry about things that oh my god think if this would happen and we worry our whole life and the thing never Never happens so we have went through our whole life worrying about something that never happened wasted a lot of time with being uh, sad and miserable without having any real cause for this uh, on the outside it's just the thoughts the head that's making you into uh, uh, that clown like the thoughts taking control over you uh, so uh, what can we do we need to look at all our worries one by one and it can help uh, with what this man is doing to write them down uh, because then you have uh, like given attention to the thoughts and the thoughts wants your attention because they are important messages uh, it's just that uh, we need to have balance in our lives we need to listen to the uh, our thoughts we need to listen to our feelings we need to listen to the logic because sometimes the thoughts isn't logical at all we worry about something that will never happen that's not particularly logic uh, and um, we also need to put our longing into the mix and what we really want to do our dreams uh, our personal skills so all these things combined is uh, uh, how we find ourselves fo uh, moving forward when we know our feelings we know our thoughts we know uh, what we are good at and what we are not so good at we know what we want with our lives we have a vision uh, and so but here the source have kind of taken over hand so we are not listening to the logic we just listen to the angel radio thoughts going on and on and on and on about something and and we can either choose to to flee or to stay and look at this and I urge you to stay and look at it so just uh, write it down the problems that you have and then see what you can solve and what you can't solve and the things you can solve you solve them uh, as um, soon as is possible and feels comfortable and the other things then you let time come up with a solution okay um, there's a story about 
uh, a person carrying uh, um, a, a, a sword through the forest. It's okay to carry one sword uh, through the forest, but when you carry seven swords, it's kind of heavy. Uh, so it's about keeping focus on what's real and not uh, thinking about all what ifs. Okay, what if this, what if that, what if this. So it's just going to burden you and make you heavy on your journey. Okay. And, and here we have another. It's a seven of pentacles. So what is it with you, Cancer, and waiting? I have been reading for your sign since um, uh, this time, 2016. So it's kind of um, a celebration for me right now. I have done this now for, for two years. And for all this time, you have been waiting for something. I don't know exactly what it is that you're waiting for. Uh, maybe you're waiting for someone to grow up. Uh, you're waiting for your life to turn around in some way. Uh, with the Seven of Pentacles, it's like we have made investments. Here, this person is taking down the mistletoe because they want to put it uh, in the opening of a door, for example, to make people kiss in the Christmas Eve. Uh, so it's like he's investing uh, energy right now to get a certain outcome, to be kissed uh, at, at Christmas Eve. So uh, it's for a good cause that we are doing this action, but we need to have patience to see what it will come back with. Uh, so sometimes maybe with the Seven of Swords and the Seven of Pentacles in combination, it's the opposite um, elements, um, uh, air and earth. Uh, so I'm thinking uh, what you might uh, be having a problem with is to accept your current situation. Either the things you don't have or how people are acting or not acting in your life or the people you have in your life or don't have in your life. Maybe you need to accept uh, whatever is uh, right now. Uh, because that might be the whole thing that the divine want, wants you to, to be able to be grateful for the life that you have uh, and um, not worry so much about the future or living so much in the future, but actually living here and now. Okay, we can plan for the future, but we shouldn't be like a little bit too um, anal <laughs> to to have too much control and and too much schedules okay it makes a person being locked into a certain it's no room for adventure this night of wands that came in if you have already everything figured out okay uh, so this is your past and we have the ace of cups here so ace of cups is this um, uh, what I talked about uh, to feel your emotions. This is one of the uh, important superpowers you have. Feel your emotions, hear your thoughts. Uh, it's kind of those two are opposites in this world. And then we have the abilities you were born with and the longing that you have now. That's um, the page, page of uh, cups, no, page of coins and the uh, page of wands. And here is uh, like the page of... Um, uh, cups. I know this is the Ace of Cups, but it was the page your inner child is holding in their hand. Uh, so it's the um, your um, vulnerability, your deep-rooted connection with the divine, your intuition, uh, your feelings, how you feel about things, how your body feel about things is a very strong lead to uh, what is going on in your life and how you are supposed to react to different things. Ace of Cups is also real uh, magnificent love in your life. You have also had the Empress Venus and here you have the Ace of Cups. It's kind of the little baby, the little embryo in the ocean inside the womb. Uh, the water inside a um, uterus when carrying a baby is kind of the same water. Uh, it's, a, it's the same kind of mix with salt and minerals that uh, we think uh, were in the real, uh, like ancient seas, uh, millions and millions and billions of years ago. Uh, so we have this connection still to these ancient waters. It's like we have ancient memories. We remember something, and it's a, a great connection. How we all come back, come from the same source. Okay. And here we have a three of wands. So we, we feel the connection with the source. We love something deeply. We have unconditional love for something. And with the three of wands, we are on our way somewhere. Uh, three again. So with the empress and the hanged man. So you have a plan. You know what you want for your future. You're set on this. Uh, you have decided 
uh, upon your future you have a dream okay it's very beautiful and with the three you can see it's like almost like a boundary here so this person is set on this they are not going to change their course of direction so it's a person that's they have felt deep inside their heart and they find the course or direction. So even in, if put in front of many obstacles, this person will probably not change their course of direction. They might lose hope sometimes, but it's a very strong combination when you have, you feel it in the deepest roots of you and you have decided upon something. It's very uh, determined. Okay. And here we have the nine of wands. So it's like the stakes have risen a little bit. And here we can see this boundary that was just three wands has become nine. It's like bec becoming a fortress a little bit. Uh, so it seems like uh, the obstacles might be uh, like collecting in front of you. And it's more challenges as you go. But you are not giving up. You're a little bit wounded here. Uh, but it's still like in this position of, of being... Uh, determined. Uh, so I'm thinking uh, this uh, is something that you have worked with uh, on for a very long time and even though you have met a lot of obstacles it haven't made you given up it has made you maybe second guess a little bit because look at his frowny face and he also has his arm in a metella here in a bandage for his maybe broken arm or dislocated shoulder uh, so you're wounded uh, you might be a little bit bitter but you're still determined okay so uh, it's kind of what the divine wants uh, from you uh, they want you to have a strong longing towards something uh, so that you will not run out of fuel halfway to your goal and the goal will be found with a lot of um, be before you come to the goal you need to jump through a lot of hoops it's like this is the uh, your plan from uh, a to b will go like this and god's plan is like t -t 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 -t, falling into many pitfalls because you are supposed to learn something you are here not to have vacation and live in paradise but to actually develop spiritually and with the nine here you, it's connected to the hermit so it's like your spiritual rainbow warrior uh, that kind of front runner that needs to it's like your development will have um, will have um, repercussion for other people's uh, uh, spiritual development. So what you do might give some rings on what the water. Okay, and here is now and we have the Lord here. So we have all this fire energy and here we have the Lord that's Aries energy. So you might be dealing with an Aries who also saw Knight of Wands, Sagittarius. Uh, you, it can also be a Leo person in your life. But it seems like what you're working on is to protect your uh, original you like the original source of you with, with very strong boundaries whatever kind of uh, challenge you meet you don't give up you're still very stubborn you don't uh, um you you don't um, second guess yourself you trust yourself even in the midst of the uh, strongest opposition uh, so I'm thinking this is what the divine wanted to trigger in you in the first place you have been so very strong for everyone else but now you are starting to become strong also for yourself to protect this inner source of your your inner vulnerability it's very beautiful okay and it might be that you have found the one we have ace of cups that's one and uh, the lord that's usually depicted like the one or it might be that you are very determined to find the one okay the one for for you uh, and yes, here we have the lover. So it seems like this is very important for you. Uh, love, commitment, uh, connections, uh, deep, uh, deep connections, not s surface their, uh, connection, but real deep. And here you have this uh, Ace of Cups vulnerability here with the little kid there, the little deer and, and this loving couple. Uh, so uh, in, in love, when we are in love, uh, it can happen that we uh, we lose our boundaries and become very vulnerable. And if this happened with with both of the entities in the love relationship, that's that's great because then we have really been we can really emerge together and almost become like one and one again. Okay, uh, but if um, one is giving everything and the other one is not giving so much, then there's going to be a 
uh, imbalance. And I'm thinking that what you are doing here, um, Cancer, is that you are trying to weigh out an imbalance. You can also see the little face of the uh, Emperor there in the water. <laughs> and it's the Ace of Cups, kind of, like the water source. I'm thinking about Odin. Uh, he hanged like this for nine days to to get certain knowledge that he wanted or needed. And he also sacrificed one eye to the wisdom well. So always keeping one eye on your emotion and acting accordingly. So I'm thinking what you want, Cancer, is more just relationships. And, and you are set on getting this. You are not going to sell yourself off short. We see this with the ter determination of the Lord. Uh, that even if you merge into a love relationship or uh, to a situation where... Um, it's li really something that ignites your deepest dreams and longings. You're still not going to sell yourself off short in these situations. Even if someone dangles a carrot in front of you, if, if it comes with, with, uh, with some kind of, um, like you, you, you love a person, but you know that uh, they don't treat you right, then you are not going to continue pushing for the love relationship with this person until they treat you right. Uh, so it's kind of this, okay. And the next card is Rebirth. So what's coming out of this, you having this um, better uh, boundaries, taking better care of yourself, standing up for yourself, is that you can be more yourself. When you have better boundaries, uh, you are more stubborn, you're also more self-acceptant accepting and you can show your vulnerability to, to others so this little person comes all naked out from the tower we also see this rabbit that for me is um, the icon of vulnerability when i see this um, in a movie i'm always afraid for them what will happen with them because they are the symbol for uh, vulnerability and to be easily hurt uh, so when you are able to be very strong for yourself, you're also able to show your vulnerability and be more genuine. Then you don't need to uh, show a false face or or lie about what you want. You can say, I love you, uh, but uh, until you treat me right, we are not going to be an item. So that's what's, what I'm seeing here. And it's rebirth, so it's the judgment day. We can see he blows his horn here. So it's like the divine wants you to uh, to kind of grow up uh, and be this so that you can also be uh, very little and very young. You can keep your innocence. You can keep your naivety because um, you can show uh, your innocent and naivety and be the one you are. But as soon as someone is being mean to you, the, the, the Lord steps in. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, I'm thinking about, um, I think it was Muhammad Ali that say, um, dance like a butterfly and sting like a bee. So I'm, this is what I'm seeing for you, that uh, you will be nice and pleasant towards everyone. Uh, but if they are uh, trying to hurt you, uh, you will not let them. It's as simple as that. Okay. If someone comes maybe being false or try to catch you in some kind of drama, make you worry, uh, you won't let them. Uh, you will keep the one sword for you to protect you, but you are not going to, you know, protect every angle of things. Um, see here if I can clarify this a little bit better, but it's um, if you accept yourself, you don't care what other people think of you. If you accept yourself, you you care because you're empathic and you want them to know the true you. But if they don't bother to know the true you, you won't hold a, a different sword for every one of these persons uh, that doesn't understand you. You will put them down and let them to not understand you. If they want to understand you, uh, they can ask you and you will tell them. OK, and they will get to know the real you if they are more interesting in putting like an image on you, like this is how you are. And this is what we have decided for you. You are this, you are the black sheep or you are the the liar or you are the weak one or the strong one or the determined one. Whatever they put like a label on you, it's not personal. It's not it's not up to you to 
change everyone's minds about you. You need to stand tall in who you are and accept yourself. And if people is really curious to get to know you, uh, they can ask you, I see this with you. And you can say, no, this is not how I am. This and this is who I am. And the person that put this label on you might also understand something about themselves. Because when we are saying things about others, it might actually be that we are talking to ourselves. When we say, oh, I'm thinking you are so, you're so, such an overly pride person. Uh, and really, they are the one that's pride, but they are just putting this label on you because you are their mirror. Uh, so that was a sidestep. But it's something I'm seeing here with the Seven of Swords and this innocent uh, nakedness I see here. That um, uh, because you're innocent, uh, people might use that against you. Uh, it's like if they see you as weak and they might, might attack you, but you're not really weak. Uh, you're just showing yourself as you are, but as soon as they attack you, you know, dance like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, and this is your future Cancer. And here we have the High Priestess. It comes underneath the Ace of Cups uh, and the Lord. And so I'm thinking this is a beautiful combination of both. Uh, when you are your beautiful... Uh, vulnerability and connected to the source but also uh, super super much in self-respect and determination uh, this is what you get the high priestess it's like um, a walking spiritual person on earth uh, when you meet a real spiritual person like someone that's enlightened you will uh, have a certain amount of respect for them and you also feel that they have this respect for you even if they are warm and generous uh, you would never say something stupid towards them because uh, they will probably make you see yourself and you would be ashamed. Uh, so uh, it's a warm love, but it's self-respect. OK, so I'm thinking this is what you will gain here. Cancer, uh, spiritual connection and, and self-respect and hopefully also warm love. The high priestess isn't the most loving card. She is... Uh, uh, a little bit cut off even if she's very close to her emotions she might have uh, um, difficulties to understand other people's emotion if they aren't very like straightforward and telling exactly what it is uh, that they mean because she's not going to read into social codes and different dramas you need to be upfront with her so i'm thinking that this is uh, might be your issue cancer that you have the best intentions but people seem to want to read in other things in this and you just need to kind of um, not go with that and and accept yourself if uh, you can explain yourself but not not to not to the degree that you start to hurt and disrespect yourself uh, you can say, well, this is not who I am. This is who I am. But don't go into the drama of it all. Don't, if the person wants to continue believing that you are in a certain way, um, let them believe it. It, it. it doesn't really matter. It matters what you think about you, not what other people think about you. Okay. And here we have also the King of Pentacles. So exactly as Leo, you have both the, uh, the King of Pentacles and the Lord in the reading. And um, this can talk about authority. It's talking about boundaries, being stubborn, like this uh, book here on the picture or the uh, Aries there, there, like just ch -ch -ch, uh, being very stubborn. And both these people have the green and the red. Uh, it's very passionate. It's colors of the heart and and the root chakra. So it's like being very stable in your self-love and believing in yourself, trusting in yourself. Uh, if you know you are a good person, uh, you don't have to listen so much to the people that doesn't think that you are a good, good person. I'm referring to the Seven of Swords still. Uh, so uh, this can be a Capricorn, a Taurus uh, or um, a Virgo in your life. But it most certainly showing this is like the brain trust of self-respect, okay, um, real solid self-respect. And here we have these boundaries and here we have this vulnerability. So I'm thinking you might start a new relationship with someone or go deeper into um, relationship with yourself. But you do so uh, with a certain kind of... Uh, self-love and self-respect it's uh, whatever you find there 
will not make you change your mind about yourself. You love yourself true and true. You, you, you know that you always do the best in every situation that possibly is. This might be an authority in your life or a group of authority. And if they are intimidating you, it's probably because you haven't taken in this authority in yourself. If you always, always let you down, authority on the outside will let you down too. Uh, so when you become your own authority, you don't have to be feisty and, you know, quick with your words and bitter. Uh, you need to be open and vulnerable and sweet, but very clear with no, that is not who I am. Uh, no, that is not what I like. This is what I like. This is what I want. Uh, so being very clear, just very clear and, and steady, like no one will be able to rock you anywhere because... Uh, you love yourself and you're not going to start to think, well, maybe I did this bad. Maybe I was like this. Maybe I should have. No, <laughs> you know that you always try your best. We can always see a situation from different angle and see how we can approve ourselves. But you're not going to carry a buttload load of swords with with guilt and fear and um, like <laughs> regrets and all these things. Uh, because it's not, not to no good use for you and no good use for others. People can be a little bit vampires. They want you to feel bad about yourself. But it's not r good for you and it's not good for them. It's like giving someone else poison and then dying yourself from this. Uh, so it, don't let people uh, treat you like this because um, it's not only hurting you. It's also hurting them. Okay. Uh, so the last card is the Queen of Swords. Okay, so a little bit bitterness maybe. We can see the Queen of Swords po posture here. She has closed her eyes. Uh, she's very determined. She holds her one sword, but she has turned her back against this uh, King of Pentacles. Uh, so I'm thinking this is needs to be your approach sometimes. If people don't want to listen to you uh, and um, they don't want to understand you, maybe you need to to turn your back against them sometimes and uh, still keep your your yourself focused on uh, loving yourself and protecting yourself she's a little bit like the hermit she lives here on the top of a mountain uh, so if she doesn't um, get people to understand her she want, might uh, retreat to the mountain and come down again and try again later and see if um, people can understand her then but sometimes she is too quiet okay she doesn't say exactly what she wants and and needs so it's easy to uh, to put the words in her mouth or to uh, write uh, okay she looks snobby so she's very snobby you don't know if it's, she's snobby but people will believe that you maybe you are snobby because you don't tell you don't talk you don't communicate yourself so it's a balance here, communicating yourself, but not explaining yourself into this kind of state, but not being so far off uh, that that you will totally disconnect yourself from others. Try to find a middle ground between these two, like um, uh, resilient, uh, keep on talking with people and keeping the communication open, uh, but not over explaining yourself and not entirely disappearing from people's life either. Uh, so this is Libra. Uh, it's like a human rights lawyer. Uh, it can be an Aquarius or a Gemini as well. It can be any persons here. We have air and earth again. Uh, so it's like it's very hard to get these two to work together for, for some reason. Um, but the Queen of Swords is... Um, uh, she can be a little bit too much thinking uh, and maybe there needs to be a little bit more action. Okay, less thinking, less, um, less um, planning and more action, actually taking action. And here we have the seven of pentacles, that's kind of no action. So um, what can I say with these people here? Um, it seems like everyone has kind of a good... Uh, relationship to each other uh, it's just that this queen of swords is a little bit of an outsider to these other people that seems to be uh, more together so it might be that someone is putting themselves uh, aside from the rest of the group because they feel misunderstood nine of wands judgment queen of swords uh, 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 ju uh, a court and, and a lawyer we don't have any judge but um, so it seems like 
like there would be needed more conversations here instead of just having very thick boundaries. We can talk more. Uh, we can understand each other more. But if you are the only one understanding, then this might be the only way to keep on moving forward, to disconnect from people in, in, and cut them off. So if you're dealing with a air uh, person, uh, they might um, not engage so much in this uh, uh, month of July, even if there is a very strong love connection because they feel misunderstood. Okay, so that's a song for you. Animals misunderstood. <laughs> okay, so I'll read the lover's card for you. Lovers number six. It's the central card of the reading, so it's probably very important. Um, it is Beltane, and the May flowers are in bloom. Lord and Lady or high priestess and high priestess have joined together as divine lovers. In this case, it's the high priestess and the Lord. Um, conveying the idea both of the great right of the union between God and goddess and of its reflection in the everyday world of romantic love between two people. In addition, the card depicts the union of the two aspects of the self, conscious and unconscious, inner feminine and inner masculine, while the divine self embodying this union is depicted as the white hind in the distance, um, the little inner child, uh, the ace of cups, the pure essence of you that you need to accept and not disrespect. If you disrespect it, others is going to disrespect it. Uh, Beltane is, um, I believe, a Celtic uh, um, <laughs> high season. Okay, I'm not that uh, into it, but... Um, it sounds wonderful, okay? It might be close to what we have in Sweden with uh, celebrating the midsummer solstice. Uh, this process of union in all its potential is symbolically en uh, enacted in the great rite of Vika and was symbolized by alchemist as the union of sun and moon at the time of eclipse. The same theme appears encoded in the central story of Druidery, the tale of Seridevan and Tali Sen, in which Seridevan, as lunar goddess, eats the solar god, depicted as a grain of wheat, a clear image of the way the moon appears to eat the sun at the time of a total eclipse. An image of the conjunction between sun and moon appears carved on the stone beneath the two lovers, as does the symbol of serpent and egg we have here. Um, and where, where I, a version of which is found on the Druid altar stone by Hadrian's Wall in Cumbria. Yes, uh, the lovers appear again in the card's numerological <laughs> counterpart, Sir Nunos. It's the devil, 15. 1 plus 5 is 6. Um, and um, so it's like this um, um, two sides to love. We can love unconditionally or love with conditions as it is with... Uh, in the devil's card and I see here that you want to love more unconditionally but when you do you also need to learn to protect yourself and sometimes to let go okay because if um, if there's imbalances and you have done all you can to create balance there's nothing more than you can do than wait okay uh, so I will also take the sacred rebels oracle card for you cancer it's overall a very beautiful reading for you uh, relax the hold of darkness and be at course. So I'm thinking it's like a resting time for you. The goal is set. You want what you want. You're not going to uh, budge. Uh, you're not going to change your mind. It's like you're waiting maybe for something to grow in another person. Uh, maybe to, for them to, to grow up to and, and take their part uh, of this also being more helpful it might be this and and you're waiting because you're not going to overdo it uh, you refuse to over function uh, in this situation okay dear sacred rebel this moment in your life requires great courage fortunately you possess that in bu bucket loads you are being asked to allow yourself to be lifted out of one level of known reality and into the next level of higher voltage reality 
higher voltage reality requires a more absolute trust and a heart that is surrendered into the great heart of the universe so that life can happen to us, through us and with us more quickly, more radically, more beautifully and more boldly. boldly. So again, that requires you to fully accept yourself and not guilt strike yourself. You are now being in, uh, invited into this new reality where things happen quickly and according to bold, loving optimism. This is uh, a reality not only of potential, but of manifestation of the great big cosmic yes. To access this reality, you have to leap, uh, you remember the ace of uh, wands card, from known waters, uh, the um, ace of cups or four of cups, and others may think you are crazy for doing so. You have to leave behind a dark, weighty grip of hesitation, the Seven of Swords, procrastination, uh, Seven of Pentacles and the Hangman, uh, second guessing, Seven of Swords, and the belief you have to do everything on your own, like the Queen of Swords believe. You may fear for your life. How will you be safe in the wild electrical pulse of so much aliveness? How will you function without the hazy sleep inducing paralysis of playing it safe, taking too long and placing lesser priorities above your sacred art of life? How will you hold yourself back if you don't hold on to fear? You, uh, or the source, you remember, the source of fear. Um, I fear this, I fear this, I'm not good enough, I'm not, they don't love me, it's like this or that. You do not need to worry about such things. Life is wild, but it's also wise. Uh, it is a force of startling raw awakening at times, but it's also the natural process of evolution where all things mature according to a seasonal cycle in the right timing. You are part of, not apart from, that process. The invitation to shift gears and jump on board the express train of life while feel exhilarating and perhaps also challenging. When you are in the hold of the darkness, you will feel pushed to turn away, to imagine it is all too much and to create excuses about how your desires aren't grounded enough, that you are being too flighty or flaky or that you are living in, uh, not living in the real world. That is fear talking, not truth. It is the sacred rebel is not awakened. We will continue to live in a culture drenched in a fear and distrust of nature. Those without awakened hearts don't yet understand what nature knows. She knows timing. She knows life and death. She knows the creative process. She just knows and can be trusted to support us, her own creations in becoming all that we want to become and all that we can become. Okay, so my beautiful wild cancers. It seems like you have the divine in, in your back. You just need to step by step uh, become this new you, accept the new you and kind of let giving the other people also a little time to accept this new you. They might be a little bit like um, discomfort and challenges during this road, but uh, it seems like you will make it just fine. It's just a, a fear from my point of view that that you will... Uh, start to judge people because they don't understand you. They don't understand you because they haven't been in your clothes yet. You are kind of a front runner. So be a good example uh, instead of running away from the people you are supposed to uh, be an example for. Okay, <laughs> so I hope this helped. I want you to take really, really good care. And if you want a private session with me, you can uh, uh, visit my website www.queenofcupstarot.com uh, dot se. Uh, I will always I'll only say this in two videos because uh, I'm already booked to the second week of uh, July. But um, I still want to keep a line open and um, and um, give the possibility of having a personal reading with me. Okay, so I want you to take really really good care, and I welcome you back to my uh, next reading that I will perform in the beginning of July. Okay. Bye-bye.